Hello, everyone, and welcome back uh, for our last presentation in this room uh, on Friday evening, at least, uh, where I am. Unfortunately, our next speaker uh, could not be present, so uh, he sent us a video that I will upload. So um, it, um, the next presentation uh, has uh, has been recorded by Frédéric Jacon from Camp to Camp, a geospatial solution project manager and branch manager and an open source enthusiast. And the presentation is related to open source software for civil protection geointelligence nexus project. And let's see. Hi everyone, I'm really happy to have the opportunity to present the Nexus project today, a project that we have been working for the past two years at camp to camp Nexus is a new system designed for um, the civil protection forces, mainly the firefighters as you can see on the picture. Nexus is using GIS open source softwares for civil protection geointelligence. Just a few words about camp to camp uh, We are very pleased this year to celebrate our 20th anniversary because camp to camp was founded in 2001. Um, so today it's about 130 people working in France, Switzerland and Germany, only in open source. And a third of the company is in uh, the geospatial department. Uh, come to come has been has always been an important actor on all the most uh, well-known uh, GIS open source component. A word about myself. So I am Frédéric Jacon. I'm a branch manager in Paris, France, and I'm also a project manager in the geospatial solution department. So I've been working for the last 11 years at camp to camp with open source solutions and very happy to do that. Okay, so before um, explaining the project, uh, just a few words about our client. Uh, our client is the Digital Agency for Civil Security. So it's an agency which is part of the French Ministry of the Interior. And this agency has a mission to build uh, innovative digital solutions for the civil security actors like the firemen. Um, they're using open source uh, bricks, components, and they participate in different interministerial projects and they contribute to open source solutions when it's possible. And we will see later on that um, this project Nexus uh, contributed to the GeoServer solution with a quite significant uh, improvement. The project now, Nexus, um, is a big, big project. Uh, it's uh, designed for all firefighters in France and it's made of many different uh, modules but um, mainly two, um, two systems that are at the core of Nexus. First, an alert management system. Uh, this system is made to uh, receive and treat the emergency calls made by people using a mobile phone or or phones and also um, in a future version we want to be able to uh, receive and, and, and deal with alerts that comes from um, mobile application or social networks and the second system is the operation management system it basically it is used to uh, choose the resources that are going to go and help the victims so the resources can be people, agents, uh, vehicles, uh, machinery, and uh, here we're talking about a lot of uh, 
different uh, situations. Uh, fire, for example, forest fire or fire in a building, flooding, uh, people uh, uh, being hurt, uh, car accidents, things like that, or pe someone who is having strokes. So uh, many, many different uh, situations and so you can easily understand now that uh, the operations management system is very complex. And finally, um, the Nexus project aims at uh, guaranteeing interoperability between different forces. Uh, very often the firefighters are called on a situation where they need the police to come by or of course medical emergency aid as well. So we need and in the end, all these different forces to cooperate and exchange information. I will just uh, show you a few screenshots. Uh, so you have a, a general idea of how, uh, of how it looks like. It's not the final version. Uh, we're getting close to this. Uh, we should go live next year. And, um, but you know, it's, it's going to be close to this uh, screenshot. So this is the um, one screenshot of the alert, alert management system. Um, so you can see on the right hand side, the map, of course, where all the um, emergency calls are located uh, with some symbols to explain what kind of call on what kind of situation that may be. And on the left, uh, a list of call that are presently uh, waiting to be answered or are treated by an operator. Um, another screenshot here is um, what the operator um, will do when he or she uh, takes a call. Um, mainly he's going to do three, he or she is going to do three things. Uh, one is of course to uh, localize the situation so where is the victim or where is the fire or where is you know the flooding and uh, this is where of course you have the map and a powerful tool of localization uh, the main tool here is a full text searches that is uh, looking into uh, national uh, addresses databases but also over databases uh, that are used by the firemen and uh, the two other columns are circumstances, exactly what happened. Uh, is it a car accident? Uh, is it someone being hurt? Uh, is it fire? And information about the victim. Uh, is the victim uh, conscious uh, or unconscious? Is, his, uh, is the victim breathing or not? Uh, is, is, how old is the victim, etc., etc. So, um, to come back to the localization widget also, uh, if someone is calling from a mobile, uh, we can ease, normal, most of the time easily determine where that person is. But after that, by talking with the people, we can uh, redefine the position a little bit uh, better. Um, so when all this information are gathered, and usually the operator must have all this information in less than 30 seconds, even quicker if, if it's possible, then all this information are uh, sent to the uh, operation management system. And in the operations management system, <coughs> again, you have a map here and all the operation uh, that are on ongoing are shown on the map with some information. You can click on them and, and see the details. And on the left, you have a list of operation with information of who and on what has been sent uh, to deal with the situation. <clears throat> so I'm not going to go into the detail, but uh, there are many, many different screens and, and functionalities, but it's just to give you an insight of uh, the tool, the, 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 the Nexus tool. Okay, so, um, well, there are challenges, of course, because basically, what is Nexus? It's a SaaS information system designed to save lives. And that is, of course, a huge challenge. Uh, when uh, you were trying to save someone who is uh, having a stroke, for example, uh, you need to, to be able to get there, to, to go to the situation in less than uh, eight minutes, maybe. Um, anyway, speed is important and efficiency and, um, and 
all that um, for uh, the entire country. So the technical channels are obviously security and high availability. But it's not only that, it's also mastery of the system. You have to know exactly what your uh, system is doing and uh, you need to be able to uh, make it evolve if you need to, you know, to improve it quite fast and easily. You need to have modular architecture, modern APIs and all the good way to program but also components that can scale because as I said Nexus is designed for the entire country and in France that means up to 250,000 potential users so I'm not saying they're not they're going to use it simultaneously but but in some times it can be uh, very demanding um, so that's where uh, open source is coming um, first of all as I said we want the opposite of a black box so we are one in open solutions that we can fix adapt evolve and, and evolve all the hard components and that is fundamental uh, to master what's in the system to be not to depend on any uh, any other uh, third party and then in the GIS uh, world uh, the solutions now are a first class choice for building this large scale solution because now the solution that we have used we are used to for this project are are easy to scale adapt and they, they are modular and <clears throat> of course they have this capability of interoperability so what are these solutions the main components we have used <clears throat> nothing special here really postgresql plus pg routing for at, le for at least, but not only, efficient root calculations that you can guess this is really an important point in that kind of system. GeoServer, of course, and uh, we will talk about high availability a little bit after. And open layers, because we want to have complex and specific web mapping functionalities and open layers allows us to do this. Okay, so just example for root calculation with PG routing. Um, right today in France, I don't know how in other countries, but we are uh, the fire uh, fighters are using what they call defend list on the left. Just means that if you take a, a fire station called MLN here. Um, it has a zone of action, I would say. So you can see the fire is located in the zone dedicated to the MLN fire station. If something happened there, then it's up to the MLN fire station to act. But in the new system, uh, what we do is to compute dynamic transit times. It means that the system will check all available resources everywhere, not sufficiently close to the situation and it will not depend on if a truck is coming from this fire station or, or another fire station we're just trying to find the best solution obviously the quickest solution and uh, knowing what kind of truck and what kind of people what kind of machinery we need to fight the situation so it's uh, possible, of course, to compute uh, routes with PG routing, obviously. Now the challenge behind that is performance, because uh, we have to do a lot of calculation to, and to find the best solution. And remember that saving lives might be a matter of two, three, five minutes sometimes, and you don't want to make any mistake. High availability with GeoServer. Um, so this is a very interesting point here. Uh, GeoServer is already a very was already um, a very efficient uh, solution, but uh, it was not enough for the expectation of the Nexus project, and so uh, we we uh, decided to. And, and with the client to develop a cloud-native GeoServer. You probably have heard about this project. And by the way, 
there was there was a detailed talk uh, in this force 4 j I think it was uh, Wednesday uh, about this uh, so I'm not going to go into the details but um, the, the general idea was to develop a microservices architecture so so a completely new architecture for geo server and um, it's uh, now available and I think in the future uh, this is going to be widely used by a lot of people uh, all over the planet. Uh, it's uh, really powerful and it, we're using it for, for Nexus. Okay, uh, an example of web mapping with open layers about root calculation. Um, well, here on the screen you can see uh, the WebGIS tool that is another module of Nexus. Uh, this is where an operator can do a number of things on the GIS data. And here it has the possibility to declare that a portion of roads is closed for some reason, because there is work on the road or, or flood or whatever, but you cannot use uh, this road. And uh, it can happen at any time in the day. So, um, the operator has the possibility to cut one portion of the road. So you can see here there is a a, um, a route from a green point to a red point and with the tool that we uh, develop um, the operator can select uh, some portion of the road that said okay this portion is closed. Uh, so the idea behind is to add a constraint, a section close to traffic. And then you can simulate um, the results on a root calculation. And you can see there uh, the result is quite straightforward. Uh, from and, and, and the detour is, is, you can see the detour that uh, one should do uh, to get to the red point. Um, so that is really important for the firemen. Uh, this is something that make a big difference. So on m my example is quite simple, but you can imagine if, uh, for example, uh, a section is closed because there is a special event, like a big um, football game or something, then you have to be able to 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 change to 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 report this on the system, uh, so that root calculation will change and uh, maybe uh, in a normal situation. Uh, in this, sorry, in this special situation, then um, you would have to uh, to to ask fighter factors coming from a different fire station as usual, compared to the usual way. Sorry. Um, this slide, um, this slide, sorry, is um, is called Beyond Technologies. Uh, I'm all, I've been always, uh, or sorry, I have only been talking to uh, technology so far and what is um, Nexus uh, doing, but um, it's been two years and we are getting close to the release of the first version. But there, it's not on, only about technologies. An open source project is about partnerships and skills. And what was great about the Nexus project is that product owners are actual firemen, firefighters, people who, are, who have been on the ground and know what, the, what they are talking about. And uh, they're working closely together with GIS experts and core open source developers in a classic agile uh, mode, scrum mode actually. But um, that's the key. And uh, it's also why we we were working this way and build confidence in the team that we could convince the client that the improvement of GeoServer was necessary and was uh, really an asset for the project. So I'm getting to the end and with a few words for conclusion. Uh, Nexus shows that again GIS open source components prove they can handle extreme technical requirements and adapt to customer needs. And that's really something, uh, that's our strength, I think. Another thing is that public projects like Nexus contributes to the continuous development of open source components. And that's 
that's the way to go, I would say, for, uh, for open source solutions. I'm not saying private sector is not contributing, uh, but the public projects are really um, a good way to, um, to contribute. Now, I said we can't wait for next year first go live. At least I can't wait for this next year first go live um, in 2022. Uh, the idea behind that is that Nexi should be fully operational, at least in the Parisian area for the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. So another big challenge. Well, thank you for uh, for your attention, and uh, I try to answer your questions if there are any. You can contact me if you you want to talk about all that, and uh, I wish you um, uh, the best for the rest of the Force 4G. Bye bye, and thank you for your attention again. Okay, and uh, that was the last presentation in our room. Unfortunately, as I mentioned at the beginning, Frederic sent a, sent a video, so he um, uh, so he uh, he cannot take live questions at this at this moment. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for staying with us, for interacting, writing in the chat, writing questions, paying attention, even though it might not be the best, uh, you know, the best time, maybe it's too late, maybe it's too early. I want to also thank Christina, my, uh, my co-leader. She did a great job and assisting me here, even though she was lurking in the dark and you couldn't see her. And um, thank you very, very much. And uh, I would like to invite you all now to go to uh, Malena Lipman stage. Uh, we have a last, um, uh, last uh, keynote, uh, OSGEO awards, and uh, some more surprises that I'm not going to not going to share with you. So, um, bye everyone, and again, Christina, thanks. Bye Thank everyone. You, Christina.